And of course, with me, we got the man with oh wait, the the man the man with the plan. BQ, say what's up to the people. You should have uh, practiced that beforehand. I should have. I should have. I should have. I you know like it's, <laughs> I forget that like the camera is backwards. So to me, you're on this side, but to the people at home. You're on this side. Ah. Fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah, we'll, we'll practice that next time. So, what up, everyone? It is the lounge, and this is the uh, we're gonna be talking about the slap the slammiversary fallout and a couple other things in the news, you know. But we we'll get into this fairly solid episode. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Real quick before we move on, just do a couple things for us real quick. Go ahead and hit that like button. Okay. We want to get the likes way up. I want the likes to match the views on this episode. So stop what you're doing right now and hit that like button. Go ahead. I'll wait. Okay, good. All right. Hit that like button. Hit the subscribe button so you are subscribed to the channel if it's your first time here. Tons of great content is always available on this page. Go back into the archives and see some of the great content that has been posted on this page. And hit that notification bell so you get notified each and every time we drop some new content on this channel. All right, so now let's just go ahead and get right into it, man. I mean, like like you mentioned, the, the Slammiversary Fallout episode of Impact was this past week, and we're going to get into that. But what outside of the ring has caught your eye this week? What outside of the impact zone has caught your eye this week? All right, so two things we'll be talking about. Uh, number one, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna hear more what your opinion is on this because I'm gonna do a separate piece on it. But uh, Lady Frost has requested her release from Impact. She went to Twitter and made it public because that's the new thing now. I don't remember what wrestler in WWE started that, but. Hey, I, I, uh, I requested my release, everyone, to kind of put pressure on the company. So yeah. uh, she has asked for her release. Mm. I, I'm not surprised. I saw it coming. I just felt it coming. I didn't want it to, I didn't want it to happen, mm. but it looks like that's where we're at. There's no word right now if Impact's actually granting that. I'm pretty sure they are. They always do. The only one they didn't was with Killer Cross in that nightmare. So, you know, give me your thoughts on uh on this because this was someone we had some high hopes for for the division and a lot of the fans did as well he was yeah. real popular within the fans mm-hmm. and um so yeah I, I i agree like i i also had high hopes for lady frost like i i, I love her acrobatic uh move set you know i think it's something that was a lot of fun i thought it's something they could have done a lot with um but i'm also not completely surprised i mean you know, there was a ton of people on the anniversary card, and she was nowhere on there. We see all the time, you know, when wrestling companies will just shoehorn people into a storyline, into a show, some way just to get them on the show. And, um, you know, she was left off of this show. And so, to me, that's a, a big indicator that something's not going right. Um, who knows what the, um, you know, what may be going on behind the scenes, um, conflicts, you know, between creative or or with pay or whatever the issues may be. But I'm sure she had her reasons. I thought Impact was actually a great place for her to develop, um, you know, great place to get some ring time, get some TV exposure, you know, just get some, some on-camera work. You know, like when you work in entertainment, what you're trying to do all the time is build up your reel. You know what I mean? Your reel is like your, your, your highlight reel. It's like your, your, um, what you have to show of your work, right? And so, you know, working at Impact is a great place to, you know, get some great, get some, get some new, new material for your reel, you know? And I think, you know, and, and every wrestler who wrestles on any type of program, your goal is eventually to get, you know, uh, offered a contract by a big company that's going to pay you a lot, like a WWE or, you know, or an AEW or New Japan or, you know, someplace where you can make really good money. And so that's the benefit to working in a place like Impact. You know, like you're not going to get the most exposure, but you're going to get enough exposure, you know, where people, the wrestling world will know who you are 
and you know you're hoping to open up another opportunity for you so maybe that opportunity has come along right like maybe she has an offer in her back pocket that we just haven't heard about um and if that's the case i hope so you know and i, and I certainly wish her the best um but i was hoping to see more out of lady frost in impact i think one of one of two things happened and again i'm gonna do something separate on this i'm not i'm not gonna talk too much on it i think one of two things happened i think either and it's strictly speculation, just to make that clear. I think she, as you said, maybe has something else in the back pocket. Because recently PCO did an interview and said, and uh, AEW contacted him. And he said, well, I'm under currently under contract with Impact. I'm going to be loyal to them. So he, he cut off any conversation. But sorry, I didn't realize one of my cats was behind me. Scared the crap out of me. Um, <laughs> So there's no doubt in my mind that AEW and WWE, what we know in the sports world is tampering, talking to someone that's under contract with another team, with, you know, right. like in sports, someone who's got contract with one team and you're reaching out and talking to them about joining you and talking money and talking contract details. So right. it's possible something like that's in her back pocket or there was something creative backstage that I think I don't know. My gut tells me she probably was under the impression Impact was going to take a look at her husband. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I, that could be completely, completely false. But yeah, uh, I don't know. Just kind of following him on social media. Like, mm-hmm. he wrestles in NWA. They both were. Okay. And then she made a, the decision to go over to Impact. So my gut tells me it's somewhat one of those two. Now, there's people who are like, oh, well, she, you know, it's surgery and she's going to be back. And I, I think people are being a little optimistic. Like, she asked for her release. Yeah. She probably was on a. Right. Who asked field. for a release when they are going to get surgery? That doesn't make any sense at all. Right. When you're on a per appearance deal, like, it, it's not. I, I don't think that just doesn't make sense to me. Right. Um, you know, it, or it's a possibility. You know, like I said, it, it could be something that she thought they were going to look at her husband. So she's like, fuck this. I'm going to go over to NWA. Right. People are always very quick to say, well, NWA doesn't pay what impact does. Yeah, probably not at the top. But when you're talking in per appearance, you know, you, you're probably paying the wrestler's booking fee. You know, and even if you, you know, even even if you're saying, hey, my booking fee is $400. Okay, well, I'll pay you more than that. You know, they're going to raise it 100 bucks. You know what I'm saying? Like, they're not going to double it. You know, impact. Oh, they're 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 tripling my booking fee, and NWA is only giving my booking fee. I, I don't see that. Right. I see the pay on the lower scale probably being fairly similar. Right. So uh, I don't know. I'm, I'm going to get into it more a little bit later, but it is disappointing because people have very very high hopes for her, and it was a good place for her and her, you know, her gimmick in general. Yeah. So. Um. <clears throat> So there was another piece of news that we saw circulate. And according to the Wrestling Observer, there are numbers out about Slammiversary pay-per-view buys and about attendance for the show. Well, have you seen this this information? Yeah, so I'm going to pull this up. Wrestling Observer reports that this year's Impact Wrestling Slammiversary pulled in around 1,200 to 1,400 pay-per-view TV buys which says it's better than last year's Slammiversary. Uh, Slammiversary last year, I don't remember what the main the main event was. Was that? Kenny Omega was part of that, wasn't he? Uh, yeah, I think so. Slammiversary last year, yeah, I think so. Yeah, so, and they were talking about, you know, uh, Hard to Kill being their highest pay-per-view buys. But they, I remember they saying Slammiversaries were up there as well. Now, these are TV pay-per-view buys. This is... Right. Comcast cable or Dish or Direct TV or, or or something along those lines. That is a form of I don't know what you call them. I guess not media, but it, it's a form of television that is going away. Mm. It's eventually going to go away forever. That day is going to come. Someone told me one day that CDs would go away, and I was like, impossible. You know, so cable television in that platform is going to completely go away one day. Right. Um, most people have streaming. So we don't know what those numbers are. We don't know what the fight numbers are. I'm fairly certain the majority of the people ordered on fight. Or I don't know if there's any other streaming options. I know I ordered on fight. Right. So um, 
you know, every every blue moon I'll order something on um when I had I had, I use YouTube TV now, but when I had Sling TV, sometimes I would just order on Sling. But even that I don't know is it counts towards these numbers. So we don't really know. This is just a portion of the big picture. These are not good numbers. This is horrible numbers, but we don't know we don't know the big the big picture at right. the end of the day. We can we can speculate what it really looks like or, or what this entails and what it doesn't entail, but yeah, you know, it, it's yeah. not great numbers and it's not good for impact on on these websites where this is the only number being reported. So of course people are like, oh my God, no one watched the show. Right. And it, it also pointed out that we had only five I hate when people sing like that. Um uh, I guess it was from a different side. I think they said like 526 people or something along those lines in attendance. Right. So we knew that was bad. We 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 knew that was coming. Wait, what was the number they said for attendance? It, it was over 500. It, it was something like 520 in the 520s, I think. So we already knew that was going to happen because people, I, I don't particularly care, but a lot of people like to pull up the seating charts and say, oh, you know, seeing how it's selling. Obviously, it wasn't selling. We all we all knew it wasn't. So, you know, I pointed this out on our slam anniversary review is that there was clearly, I said triple last time, but I'll say there was clearly double the people there from an impact episode. Right. So that kind of tells us, hey, when when they do a, a episode of television, we're talking like 200, 250 people there, which was basically what they were doing in Orlando. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, you know. It's tough, man. It's 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 tough. You know, like, oh, you know, you'd you'd love to see them doing better numbers. Um, ah, it's just a rabbit hole. We're just not gonna go down that. Day. But listen, I, I think no, no, no. I am gonna go down that rabbit hole just a little bit. Um, right. just enough to say that I want to remind Impact fans: protect your joy, okay? Protect your joy. If you enjoy watching this show like I do, stop looking for growth. Stop hoping for growth. I'm telling you. Because you can't control it. I can't control it. We can't control it. Stop putting your energy and your hope into something that you have no control over. And to be honest, based on everything we're seeing, it's probably not going to happen. Okay? Like, Stop letting, you know, comparison is the thief of joy, man. Don't let Impact's lack of growth steal your joy. Enjoy the show, watch the show for what it is, and just stop hoping that it's going to grow. You know what I mean? Like, because um, I don't see any evidence that it is, but I still do enjoy the show. So, like, that that's just my reminder from me to you, from TW to, to, to Impact Lounge Nation out there. Like, just stop. Don't listen. Just, just, just don't do it to yourself. Don't do it to yourself. Don't, you know, sit here going, oh, I hope they sell this venue out. You know, like, ah, like, I'm telling you, just stop doing it to yourself. Just tune in for the storylines, enjoy the stories, support the wrestlers, buy the merch, do whatever you're going to do. But, like, you know, if we pop on Impact one day and they got a thousand people in the building, good, great, awesome. We'll celebrate it. But, Stop hoping that it's going to happen. Just just stop. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Just stop hoping that that is that is going to that they're going to come up in that way. Um you know, I it's not that I think it's a po- impossible because I don't think it's impossible. But the the best indicator of future performance is what? Current performance. Past performance. Past performance. (laughs) Yes. So, like, so, so, so logic says that they're not going to grow. But we still all enjoy this show. We all still enjoy this product. That's why we're here. So let's, damn it, let's enjoy what we got. So Right, enjoy. When I'm always pointing out the marketing, when I'm always talking about the social medias, I'm not, I, I don't say that stuff saying, hey, if you market it like this, you're going to get all these brand new viewers. That's not at all where I'm going with it. Where I'm going with it is you have a social media following, you have a TV uh, a TV following, those people need to turn into paying customers. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. So that's the point I'm I'm saying when I say, hey, where's the video packages? Where's where's this and this? Um, that that's about getting your following excited enough to purchase a product. Now, when I'm talking about we own the night and the red all over the place, that is more, hey, if I was tuning it in to impact for the first time, because of course we do want want it to grow viewership wise. I say that kind of stuff in mind with if I'm watching this show for the first time, this doesn't look good. Yeah. So I'm pointing it out like that. But for the most part, when I'm saying, hey, on social media, they're supposed to be doing this and this and this. There should be buzz. There should be whatever. It's it's to take that current followership you do have and and do something with it. Because you can say all day, oh, we're we got four million followers on YouTube. I think when. I started the lounge. They were at like, I think they were under 2 million. I think, I think they were in the one range. So th- that's growing quite a bit, but if you're not turning that into, uh, and that that's revenue. Yes. With YouTube. But if you're not turning that to someone who's, who's I'm going to order the pay-per-view, I'm, I'm going to tune in. Like, what are you doing? So it's great to have those numbers, but that's why I'm always like, yo, create content that in depth, that, that those people will be interested in. Right. You know, um, we we talked about we're going to do our best not to do the AEW comparisons, but the one thing AEW is good at is they take their television audience and they they turn their television audience into pay per view buyers. I, I guess is what I was trying to say. They have a very high ratio of viewer to uh, I would say consumer, but you know purchaser of said pay-per-view right you know their pay-per-view numbers have been going up i think they're gonna i think it's gonna go down with forbidden door but for for the most part they've been go they've been going up they've been trending upwards because they know how to market their product in a way that they're, they they take their tv audience they take their social audience they speak to them marketing elicits emotion and that emotion makes people act and right. then they go and they purchase. Yeah. So, you know. But, uh, but you know, also, I think, like, since you brought up, like, AEW, I think, you know, an interesting thing that I think AEW has and that Impact has, too, is this just this, this, this brand loyalty, you know? Like, again, mm-hmm. you know, look at how much, how much interest you get around the old school TNA stuff. Look at how many people in the Impact – uh, conversation are always like, oh, bring back this, bring back the six sided ring, bring back the fucking turkey suit, like whatever, you know what I mean? Like the, you know, people love. There, there are people who who have that, you know, brand loyalty to TNA, right? So, but just like you said, right? Like the the trick is converting those people into paying customers. You know what I mean? Because, and I always say this all the time. You know, like, I don't buy the accuracy of ratings numbers at all. But, like, if the Observer is saying that there's, you know, 108,000 people a week watching Impact on Access TV and only 1,200 people buying the pay-per-views, like, what is that, like a 10% conversion rate? Like, that that sounds, is that that a good conversion rate? I was like, oh, sure. I think oh, right, 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 yeah. right, right. Because like a twelve thousand would be a, a ten percent. That's right. So like, right, that's that's awful, right? That's awful. So again, like, I don't necessarily trust those numbers, but my goodness, like, you got to do more to, you know, whatever, 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 whatever. We, we're not, we're not gonna, we're not gonna dive into that. So it is what it is. I, I, I think what what you said is the main thing, which is that like, if we're not talking about the fight numbers, like, what are we talking about? Because I I haven't once heard Impact say, you know, contact your local cable provider. I always hear them talking about order on Fight TV. Right. Right? So Mm -hmm. I would think that the the, there has to be some numbers from Fight that would, I don't know if they're they're better than 100,000, but I'd be interested to know, you know, what the numbers are from from Fight. Um, uh, And, like, why do we trust that Meltzer is getting accurate numbers? Like, where are those numbers available to the public? I don't think so. 
So why would we believe this? Yeah. I, again, I'm not being like like you know tinfoil hat conspiracy theorist. I know Meltzer has gotten a lot right over the years. I know that you know he probably has had more conversations with Vince McMahon than any person on the planet. But I just want to know, like I like sources. Give source your information for me. Like, source your information for me so I can say, oh, that makes sense. Okay, cool. I, I, I know it's real. But I'm not going to just take your word. Like, I, I, I do, I, I, I get this all the time with, like, um, like sports journalists, right? Who be like, oh, a source inside the team says that the coach is on the hot seat. I'm like, who's your source? Or something. You got to give me something better than I'm just going to take your word because you work for the daily whatever. You know what I mean? Or you work for the whatever post. You know, like, I just, I need sources. So that's just me. Like, I don't take a person's word. Like, Mike Johnson from PW Insider, I actually do trust him because he's been, I think, consistently accurate and fair with covering Impact. So I trust his reporting on Impact more so than any other reporter. I agree with that. I don't care for him, but I, I trust his reporting. Yeah. So, like, so, so I think that, I think that um, there there are, but but with, with other people, I'm just I don't know. I just would like to know like what's the, the this blind faith that we're just gonna take everything this person says. You know what I mean? So, uh, right. A lot of people seem to feel that way about Meltzer. Um. Oh, another little piece of news that dropped. Uh, Impact knockout. Giselle Shaw. Uh, can't, went on went on to. Um, what was the TV show? I think it was like a, a Good Morning. It was like it was a, a, it was a morning show in Canada. Uh, a local morning, a local ca- Canadian morning show, and she came out as a as as a, a, a transgender woman. And shout out to Giselle Shaw, like that's that's pretty cool. To um, you know what I think is like you know really cool about that is like, you know, I I, I don't I don't know that I would have ever thought. You know, I would have ever, you know, thought that that was like a thing, you know. Um, but like, I think what's great is like anytime people can like live their truth, you know what I'm saying? Like um, people shouldn't have to like, you know, hide, you know, who they are or, you know, something like that, which I'm sure is like, you know, I, I can't imagine how major of a life event it is to, you know, like go through, you know, like transforming your whole life like that you know what i mean like right, right. I, I can't imagine um what type of major life event that is so um you know shout out to her for um just for you know i guess i'm sure there's probably like a great freedom in um in in, in being open in public about something that you know had to be just a huge major moment in her life so shout out to giselle, giselle shaw shout out to impact for being very supportive of her uh in in a public space um and i mean like i'm sure it's one of those things where like um i've heard stephanie mcmahon say a few years ago philanthropy is the new pr right so like you know you see impact posting with the 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 pride logo and like all that stuff you know what i mean so but you know whatever it's cool man like i think it's it's, it's great to support um you know there's there's millions of people who are going to see that and feel you know um supported and comforted by it so to me that's dope i'm here for it shout out to giselle giselle shaw shout out to impact um that's dope <clears throat> yeah what what upsets me though for the most part it's very positive reception online but there's some people very very close-minded to where you know you know they're saying you know congratulations and and this and this and people are like why are, why is congratulations in order um if if she wants to be a woman, why does she have to tell everyone that she didn't used to be? Like, it, it's it's very closed minded thinking, um, yeah. because you, you don't, as you as you just said, you know, not a. I hate using the word "living my truth," the term "living your truth" and shit. Like, I, I really do. It's one of those like buzz phrases. But right, right, know, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I get that. <laughs> I guess because they say on the Bachelorette a lot, like I know, I know my truth. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so it, it's got to be very difficult to 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 live like that, and not living your truth. You know, it has to be very very difficult. Anytime someone you know is is, oh, I'm, I, I'm homosexual, and they, I've been hiding this for years. You know what I mean? And then finally, you know, it, it, it's a huge weight lift off your shoulders. You know, like mm-hmm. she's not. She doesn't owe it to anyone that 
she's because she, you know, chose to live that lifestyle that she should keep it, keep it inside and keep it to herself. Right. So right. it's just very like close minded thinking, you know. Um, you, you know what I'm hearing when I hear that? I think it's, I think it's a lot of dudes who were who was looking at Giselle Shaw like, yo, what's up? And now they're like, oh, I would I would have never thought. I, I was I, I was one of the <laughs> number you know number one people. I got on here all sorts of all sorts of episodes like, yo, Giselle Shaw's hot, you know. Yeah. I'm not uh, I'm not transphobic. I'm not homophobic. Man. I'm very secure in myself, so I take back I I don't take back what I said. I'm not gonna sit here and oh right. uh, I, <laughs> I I don't I take nothing back. <laughs> I'm very secure myself. I'm probably not going to say anything going forward, but you know what I mean. Um, <laughs> I take nothing back. I have uh, no, I have but, no li- but listen, no man. Problem. I think like I, I think that like I think that um, I was having this conversation in a in a work meeting a few weeks ago. You know, for a lot of men, right? Like we grow up. Um, you know, like again, it, it's a buzzword, but it's a true thing. Like what is this thing? This concept of like toxic masculinity, right? Like. You know, like uh, just a lot of the stuff we, a lot of the boys will be boys stuff that we learn is fucked up. Like this shit is fucked up. You know what I mean? Like a lot of the shit we learn to be okay with is pretty fucked up. Um, but like, I think like again, like as grown adults, and then just uh, understanding, just like you were saying, like just the simple fact of like, yo, this is some heavy shit that she went through in her life. Like, this was a heavy-ass thing for her life. Like, we've all, like, okay, 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 uh, fellas out there. Think about the, the, the something that you went through that you know other people thought was stupid but bothered the shit out of you, okay? <laughs> like, <laughs> okay, if, if you're a wrestling fan, think about how mad you've gotten over, like, a wrestling angle or something stupid, and you know that if you ever mention that shit to the world, they would be like, yo, you are a nerd. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you know, and 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 I and I'm really not trying to trivialize what somebody um going through like a, a transgender transformation. I'm not trying to trivialize trivialize that at all. But I'm just saying that like you just can't relate. Like I'm saying you can't throw stones, okay? Like we've all probably gotten mad about some dumbass shit. We've all we've probably thought some uh something really, you know, corny was a big deal. But we can't relate to something as heavy as like, yo, like I'm gonna make this major life change. Like, that's that's some heavy shit, bro. That's some heavy ass shit. So, so be an adult, be a grown up, and just respect the fact that everybody's different, man. Like, I, let me say one more thing about this, right? And then, and then I'm not, I'm really not trying to be like preachy about this shit. But like, it's always wild to me when people are like, oh, you know, the the public is. Uh, supporting all these things and why do I have to talk to my kids about this? I'm like, dog, like, what is so hard about saying to your kids, yo, everybody's different, okay? Like, everybody's different. Some people, you know, like, every family's different. Some, uh, you know, like, you know, in my house, we have, you know, a daddy and a mommy and a and, 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 and two kids. Like, that's, that's our house. You know what? Some families have uh, a, a, a daddy and a grandma and um and and that's and and some kids and that's the family some families have two daddies and some kids and that's the family some families have two mommies and some kids and that's the family like everybody's different and so like it's always so wild to me and people are like yo why do i have to talk to my kids about this like what are you talking about what are you talking about it's it's just a fact of life every family's different okay everybody's different okay everybody's different like like just chill out people chill out live and let live you know what i mean like we come through this earth for a short amount of time and like why be stressed about how other people are living their life you know what i mean like let's uh let's let's the let's 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 let's, let's have some fun let's love each other and let's enjoy you know stupid things like professional wrestling and uh you know you know what i mean right bq hell yeah hell yeah all right so uh enough of that like real life stuff let's talk about some wrestling all right so uh this week's episode of impact was the fallout from slammiversary um if you haven't caught the live stream bq did two live streams following slammiversary uh he did one solo dolo and then i just had to hop on one so we did another one back to back so there's two slammiversary reactions on this channel 
just go back in the archives and check them out and drop some comments and tell us what you thought about the show and about BQ's thoughts and about our thoughts on the show. But this episode of Impact was the fallout from Slammiversary. So let's get to it. Uh, we on the night. Oh, oh. Mm. <laughs> this eight days away from against all odds, the fallout from Slammiversary began on an all new Impact on Access TV or if you're me, YouTube. Uh, following their loss to Impact Originals at Slammiversary, I don't know more storms the ring to kick off the show. I actually love this. <clears throat> they came out, Mike Bennett grabbed the camera, and he was holding it. By the way, Mike Bennett, you did a really shitty job at framing all those shots. You were cutting off everybody's head, the top of their head. You got to frame it so that there's a little bit of space over the person's head when you're putting your shot together, okay? Remember that next time you grab a camera, Mike Bennett. Um, and they were just there cutting a promo. Eddie Edwards delivers a message. He denies the loss on Sunday. He blamed it solely on the individual who was pinned being PCO. Then Vincent suggests that the deck was stacked against him after Tracy Brooks, D'Lo Brown, and Earl Hebner got involved. Matt Taven, oh, Matt Taven. he says that uh, he didn't that the that he didn't kill Ring of Honor. He saved Impact Wrestling from mediocrity. One of the greatest tag teams in Impact history, America's Most Wanted, interrupted this promo. James Storm says that back in his day, they had to earn the respect of not only their peers, but the fans as well. And when a wrestler used to look like a wrestler, <laughs> he said, uh, then Chris Harris uh, says that he and Storm came into TNA together, and if they have to, they'll go out together. That sounded weird. Uh, new, then the uh, new Impact World Tag Team Champions, the Good Brothers, and the Briscoes join America's Most Wanted, and a huge brawl breaks out as Honor No More is sent scurrying. What did you think about that opening segment right there? All right, so as far as the opening in general, I've touched on this on a few episodes, that the episode takes too long to start. Um, and <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do the AEW comparison. I, I, we, we really are going to work on not – comparing it to that show so much i only compare because that's the other company i watch let, 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 let me let me let me say this though when i talk about like comparison is a thief of joy i don't mean i think i think stuff like that right comparing you know styles of putting segments together to me i think that's fine right when i say comparison is thief of joy i mean in particular about the idea of growing impact wrestling you know what i mean like i think that like a lot of us fans watch impact with this hope that there'll be some return to the to 2010 you know what i mean 2011 when the show was well lit and touring and you know playing arenas and and all of that stuff and i think we need to just stop looking and hoping for that but as far as like compares comparing the way that a show is put together nah man like let's do that because if there's somebody if somebody's watching this and their main frame of reference is AEW then your comparison will hit home. You feel me? Right. So I think those comparisons are fine. Okay, so the comparison I'm trying to make, I, I'm sure I've said this before. I, I'm getting old, so I, I I know I repeat myself. It takes like AEW 45 seconds to start, and they're getting into their first match. I, I screenshotted this. It That whole opening sequence before we honor no more t came out took over four minutes so it, it's this long recap they, they do and it felt like it was never going to end and then i'm like they're probably just going to go right into the episode and then here's we own the night and i'm just like do one of the two but don't do both right. because that's you do lose viewers it may not be the hardcores but the people who are flipping through the channel sometimes i watch impact sometimes i don't if you're watching this and they're not starting the damn episode, you're going to change the damn channel. And I know that from everything I studied within YouTube content creation, it, it, that if, if you're, you know, if your intro, you notice my intros on my channels, never more than 11 seconds. Usually, you know, the, the one where I just have the logo is like seven seconds long. The one for these podcasts is, is, you know, 11 sometimes. Yeah. It's usually about 11 seconds is where I have it at. So, because people will look for something else, they don't have that same 
um, trying to think what it is when someone, someone, uh, oh my God. I'm just going to sit here and just stare at the camera and in complete silence. And <laughs> um, certain, oh my God. Je ne sais quoi. A certain, I don't know what. <laughs> I honestly, God cannot find the words I was trying to say. And it's just uh, on the tip of my tongue and it's uh, driving me absolutely crazy. But the point I'm saying is you have to get jump into the content. Right. You have to over four minutes before they come out and then by the time honor no more is done talking the bell rings at the 25 minute and 31 second mark that is entirely too long before you start wrestling on a wrestling show right. so cut out the fluff in the beginning and I, I mean the episode could have benefited very well from just going into honor no more stuff because honor no more was good here Eddie Edwards was pretty good. You know, Taven talked and I, 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 I like Taven a lot when I didn't watch ring of honor enough. So when people are like, Oh, he was a horrible champion. Like I can't right. see it. dude. like, I wish that fool would hold the impact title. Like I, I feel like he can talk. He's, he's got a, you know, a good look. Yeah. You know, I, I think, yeah, I, I think, I think Matt Taven as ring of honor champion, I think he got a bad rap because ring of honor was too far gone. Um, and, and I think that, like, the thing that, you know, Ring of Honor diehards probably won't admit is that, like, y'all left Ring of Honor to die. You know what I mean? Like, Ring of Honor had, yeah. um, Ring of Honor had, it had a great run. And people romanticized that run, like, so greatly. And, and it's fine, right? It's fine. But, like, Ring of Honor died because the market made a choice. The people made a choice. Y'all made a choice that y'all was going to stop watching Ring of Honor. Like, by the time Ring of Honor came to an end, they were playing shows in front of nobody. Okay? So, like, so like y'all made a choice to move on. And part of that, you know, part of that, again, is, like, Ring of Honor fans romanticized the good old days. That's why they're still you know, still fawning over Cesaro and Brian Danielson and CM Punk. And they they didn't feel like Matt Taven was, uh, you know, Ring of Honor enough or, you know, quality enough as Ring of Honor champion to carry that legacy in a proper way. And so, like, there's some resentment from, you know, like, Ring of Honor diehards towards Matt Taven. And so he's heard, you know, that type of stuff, like he was a bad champion and he ran Ring of Honor to the ground. Matt Taven is a talented dude. Like you said, he can talk, he can wrestle, he can do the whole deal. I think it's tough because some a lot of times, a lot of times when people leave, people step up. Um, you, you know, look at, look at like the attitude era, right? Like, you know, Austin was the biggest thing and then rock was, you know, equally as big as Austin. And then they, you, you look up and they're both gone. What happens? Triple H steps up. You know what I mean? And like, that's a big reason why me, my timeline for watching wrestling around the time where Triple H stepped up to be the top guy, I wasn't really watching wrestling at that time. So, like, I just don't view Triple H on that same level as, like, a Rock Austin, even though they talk about him in that way, you know, because he's the person that stepped up once those guys were gone. Similarly, here, right, like, you know, rattle off your list of Ring of Honor guys who went on to, you know, WWE or yada, 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 yada. You know, uh, once the Adam Coles and Kevin Steens were gone, it was Taven's turn. Like as a as a Ring of Honor original or whatever, you know, like it was a homegrown guy. It was his turn to step up. And I didn't watch the product, so I can't tell you whether or not he was a good champion. I can't tell you whether or not he had good matches. But like, this is one of those things where it's it's probably unfair the burden that they're putting on him because they just decided that. He wasn't, you know, a quality person to be representing that title, right? And so he just has to wear that now. 
And I think that's trash. You know what I mean? I, I think that's trash. You know, like, I don't know. Maybe he's not small enough. You know, maybe he doesn't do enough flips. I don't know. Whatever it is, um, you know, they decided that he wasn't he wasn't their guy in that way. And um, and he's just – he's never – He's never been able to live that down. The word I was looking for, or words, was attention span. <laughs> I don't know why I could not remember that. Because I struggle from that. My kids struggle from that. So I should be very familiar with it. But people don't have <laughs> the attention spans right now that they did last year, or the year before, 10 years ago. You know, So these long-ass intros, I just right. think it's, it's very – I think all the, the highlights is are, are very pointless. You can you can um, pepper those throughout the show. You can sprinkle it here and there, like when when it's relevant to the segment. Mm-hmm. But you know these two three minute uh, recaps they do every every week is too much. But I, so I, I thought Honor More really looked good um, or really sounded good. My least favorite part about Slam Anniversary, I said when we did our our post recap, was when James when when James Storm and Wildcat Chris Harris came out. Not that I wasn't happy for them to come out. That's not what I'm saying. But when they came out and they started talking about running down all the tag teams and the history, talking to two teams who have nothing to do with the history of Impact Wrestling. Right. Nothing. They're, they're, the, prob- the Briscoes are probably going to be blips on the radar when it's all said and done. Hopefully not. Hopefully they're here going forward. And the Good Brothers, like, we're going to make sure they are because we're, once they're done, we don't want to talk about them anymore. So I I just I I thought the whole segment was like really weird, really forced, just a way to get James Storm and, and Chris Harris on the show. Right. And they come down, and it's like these guys have this feud where I mean, I'm not gonna call it a blood feud, but they hated each other. I mean, the good fr- brothers went to the farm and did all, you know, trying to stalk the kid and all that shit. And then all of a sudden they're just <laughs> having a beer together just just to do it. And then right. these fuckers come out like they're baby faces now. Like, what is this? Yeah. Um so that I, I I just didn't care for, but uh, but other than that, the honor no more part of it was was very good. They're kind of teasing kicking PCO out, which they might as well because they're all over the place with how they present them. Right. Um. So I don't know. I thought it was a good segment. It was very long, but it wasn't bad long. Like it, it should have just kicked off the show. They should have just. I mean. Five seconds in Impact Wrestling, these four are coming down. That no, we own the night. No, you know, slow motion clips. Just get into this because that's it's like serious shit, you know. So I wish they would have done that, but um, it's good stuff. I just want more for Honor No More. I I, I just can't help but to feel like they have one. Uh, there's one nail left in in the coffin to to hammer down, and it's done. I mean, that's right. how I feel when I'm watching them. It's like so you feel like they're on the verge of being like irrelevant. Yeah, they're they're like one major loss away from just as a team, like mm. being done. I mm. just you cannot <clears throat> they lost the slam anniversary, but there were so many shenanigans. Mm. It was overbooked, but it wasn't bad overbooked. Like it was still entertaining. I but think it, like with 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 that group, they there's life in them outside of being a group. Right, like, right. like, um, like you know, I've, I've said so many times that you know I think the Matt Taven and Mike Bennett and Maria act is so good. You know what I mean? Like, it's just so good. It's a great act. And I think like when when Matt Taven and uh Mike Bennett went their separate ways, Matt Taven was forced to develop himself as a singles act. So those guys, in some ways, kind of feel like two singles acts paired together as a tag team now. Whereas they, you know, they used to be just like a tag team. But again, like you, you throw Maria into the mix. She's a heater, you know, like um, you, you just can't go wrong. So like, so, so I think those guys have plenty of life as a tag team. You know, PCO is PCO, man. Like, you know, he's going to do his PCO stuff. Um, yeah, what are you going to do? You know, what I mean? like um, I think, you know, Kenny King, you can always get, you know, good matches out of Kenny King anytime you want. Um, I think you could actually do a lot with Kenny King. Like, I don't see why, you know, I don't see why Kenny King couldn't be like, you know, a, a top performer for, you know what I mean? Just just feature him, give him a, 
a shot to, you know, play a big role. Like, you know, has Kenny King ever really been given a shot to play a big major role? You know, he has it. And and he actually would be pretty good with a digital media championship. Um, so I really popped the bachelorette thing with Chris Harris. Yeah, I thought that was good. I've talked about this a lot. I watched the shit out of The Bachelorette and The, and the Bachelor. <laughs> I'm, again, I'm very confident in myself, in my masculinity. I love that freaking show. I have watched it since I was 20 years old. I'm 42 now. I don't miss a season. I, wow. I watch all that crap. Kenny King was on the show. Very popular. Very popular with the audience. And this is a big audience of you know, millions that watch the show. He was on Bachelorette and then Bachelor in Paradise, which is kind of a spinoff they do in Mexico. Uh, he was extremely, extremely popular. So I would imagine his social following is pretty big, mm-hmm. but, you know, they also haven't leveraged social media for the digital media championship for shit. Right. Um, which Rich Swan wasn't even on this show. So, uh, but I... I think he could do some entertaining things and, but, but you're right. They haven't, he's never really been given like, Hey, here's the ball run with it. Like, you know, right. you're, you're the point guard. This is your team, right? Like he's never had that opportunity. Uh, he could, he could do a lot though. I, I, I'm very confident in him, but right. you know, as far as like pop culture and all that, like, dude, he's, he's more popular than anyone on the impact roster right? outside of pro wrestling. It's not even close. Why would you leverage that? <laughs> um, um, but so so again I think there's life in Honor No More outside of them being a group like you know again we get it you guys came over from Ring of Honor like I think that part of the story has run its course you need to get to the what we're doing as a group here which again the ultimate function of them as a group as far as a, a, a plot device is for them to be a heel army going against Josh Alexander. So get to that and then break the group up. Let these guys all do their own thing. I think, you know, it's a talented group of people. Like, I don't know anything about uh, the dude with the dreads, whatever his name is. Um, I think that, you know, there could be something there, but give me a chance to get to know about this character. You know what I mean? So, so you got, you know, what is that? Five, six talents right there. Like, you know, let, let those guys, let's, let's see what they can do. Um, so it's, I think it, it could be time to move on from the Honor No More thing. And it looked like that's where they were leading with the blaming of PCO for the loss. And then, um, yeah. and then you know, they kind of steered back towards blaming Impact. But, um, you know, Honor No More could be coming to an end, and I, and I don't think that would be a bad thing at all. What, what I just don't understand – and it's going to take me having to watch some pop TV episodes. And we've been talking about spinning off and doing another podcast, reviewing some of the earlier Anthem stuff. Uh, but I, and I know the pop TV stuff is prior to Anthem, but I need to take some time and watch some of those episodes with Mike Bennett and Maria, because they were such a, a dominating part of the show. Like they just felt, they were like stars on the show before. And now they're just right. like people on the show. I, I, yeah. I don't understand. Like, especially Maria Canellis, who was the mouthpiece. Yeah. And, you know, she would cut these like promos. I thought yeah. they overexposed her a little bit at one point. But, I mean, there was a, they brought a lot of star, especially her, because she came from WWE, a lot of star power to the show. And it's like, that's completely lacking right now. It's just, it, right. they just feel like, you know, I think that with uh with Mike and Maria, I think the last time they were impact, I think Mike was kind of going through his substance abuse issues. Uh, no, I apologize if I got this timeline wrong. Timeline wrong. Um, I definitely don't want to accuse anybody of anything that you know is is inaccurate. Um, I'm just speculating here. Um, but if that's the case, you know, maybe there's some trust trust issues there uh, between him and the company. Um, or, or maybe again, like, you know, maybe they just lost in the sauce with Josh Alexander right now and they can't see past anything else. Like I still see the potential in, um, in those guys from, you know, when I saw them in what 2015, when I watched them on destination America. So, so yeah, I mean, 
Maybe Scott Demore doesn't see that. Maybe he does, but only time will tell. I certainly think those guys have the talent to be major players and, you know, impact is foolish if they don't use everybody they have to their fullest ability. I really think, and I know we talk about the lighting and all that kind of crap. I really think, again, I'm going to go watch some pop TV episodes because there's just something missing in some of these, even like with Rosemary and some of the people who are still kind of around something just freaking missing from these, these guys when we see them on screen right now, I don't know if it's the camera angles. I, I don't know if it's because we're not seeing a crowd behind them when they're talking, when they're wrestling or I don't know what it is. I mean, cause they used to do a completely different camera angle on the ring uh, where the entrance was to the, left as you're watching now it's in front of you i don't know if it's you know uh just the optics of in general or, or what it is but it's i don't know i just feel like if, if you were, felt big on the show once before and you come back it, ec3 is a good example too like what you know what he meant to the product when he came out and when he came back he just felt like another dude on the roster right and i i'm I'm just curious to see where where the disconnect is with how they how the they're being presented on TV now. In yeah. comparison. Yeah. Yeah, so. no, definitely look into that and like that's something we could definitely revisit uh back here on the show. All right. So Giselle Shaw breaks off her tag team with Alicia after Alicia was dominated by Masha Slamovich last week. Shaw says that she is destined for tag team gold. She just needs to find the right partner what you think about that right there uh, she she dropped well, your so girl confused. alicia i was so confused well first of all i'm upset because i wanted them to be a team they post together all the time on social media uh they're flipping giselle shaw back to heel when she's the biggest baby face in the company at the moment right <laughs> so, <laughs> that's the problem when you don't have a live product you know what i mean like you would have if this was a live show, they would have adjusted on the fly. Right. But they're like, hey, we're going to turn you back heel. And then we didn't know this was going to happen. All of a sudden, you know. So now it looks silly. One of their heels and they're on social media giving her the rah, rah, we're behind you and, and, and all right. that. So, <laughs> it's, you know, I, I just kind of had to chuckle. But I'm upset because I wanted them together. I've been begging for Alicia to be like in a story other than being Eddie's wife, you know. Um, but I'm confused because with with lady frost i was like well alicia stepped into her her spot but now they're saying well we'll go team with frost and it, i i don't know it doesn't seem like it's that lady frost spot anymore or they just adjusting some things you know hey alicia we need you to step into this role here and then we're gonna break you guys off and go back to plan a i, I don't know what it is but it, it just it's weird uh giselle shaw's uh, scared of masha i guess I don't. I don't know what's going on there. I, I mean, being, be being scared of Masha is uh, nothing wrong with that. She yeah, but I don't want to destroy it, people. It, it's just weird that she's like adamant about like, no, I don't want nothing to do with her. Right. Could it be? I know they. I know they tease some stuff with the influence. Could it be? Do you think that they would team up, Giselle and uh, Masha? I mean, they're so different. But you know what? That makes a good pairing, right? That makes interesting pairing. Difference, you know, uh, reluctant teammates is one of the favorite storylines that people love to do with tag teams. So that could be where this is all going. Yeah, right? because because Giselle and and Lady Frost was the was the uh, reluctant teammate type of thing. But also, didn't they do the "I'm looking for a tag team partner" thing with? Um, to Neil Dashwood when they were doing the knockouts tag tournament when they first introduced the titles. <clears throat> yeah, to Neil, yeah. Yeah, she was very much like, oh, I'm looking for a tag team partner. So a little little recycling of the storylines there. All right. Impact Vice Pre Executive Vice President Scott Demore informs Honor No More that they will battle Impact World Tag Team Champions, the Good Brothers, the Briscoes, and James Storm in a 10-man tag match next Friday at Against All Odds. But tonight, it's Eddie Edwards, Matt Taven, and Mike Bennett versus the Briscoes and James Storm in a six-man tag main event. Uh, okay. Uh, we got Chelsea Green versus Deanna Parrazzo. Oh, Chelsea Green with Deanna Parrazzo versus Mia Yim. This was actually really good. 
Yes. Um, I gotta say, this is the best Chelsea Green match I've ever seen. Um, and I and I, I'm not saying that to this Chelsea Green, but I think that like you know Chelsea Green, you know she's in great shape. Uh, she looks really athletic. Um, but I haven't seen a ton of Chelsea Green match. Where I'm like, oh man, that was a good match. And I think like, um, and again, I don't mean this as any diss to Chelsea Green, but I think this is a testament to how good Mia Yim is. Mia Yim is really good. I really enjoyed this match. This was a fun watch. Um, it came down to uh, Mia Yim hitting the eat defeat on Chelsea Green for the win. But there was a lot of, you know, interference by Deanna Perrazzo. Uh Mickey James came down to neutralize Deanna Perrazzo and uh, Mia Yim beat her with the eat defeat. Um, you know, good stuff here from both uh, Mia Yim and Deanna Perrazzo. I liked on commentary. Uh, I think it was Tom Hanavan said, uh, Deanna Perrazzo calls herself the HBIC. And uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He said, yeah, yeah. me and Yim calls herself the HBIC. And Deanna Perrazzo says, I would inter- I would identify her with only one of those letters. <laughs> and I, was like, I thought that was funny. So that was good, man. Deanna per- Perrazzo is a disgusting heel. Make sure you boo her anytime you get a chance to. Uh, also, if you see her on social media, just type boo under any of her comments and or God. pictures. Uh, tell her that negative BQ sent you. <laughs> yeah. I, I like that they put people on commentary. Um, you know, I would have m- much more liked it if they did it back when uh, Stryker and Dilo were in the booth or, or, or Josh and Madison or Josh and Don. Like, I would have. Pre- I would have preferred this stuff a lot more then when the com- commentary was like really lacking. Now the commentary is really good, so it doesn't add as much, but I still enjoy it. Uh, this was one of the the better knockouts matches I think thought they had on TV in a while. I didn't. I never thought Chelsea Green was going to win. They're you know they're not going to make me a lose. They're 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 just not. Yeah. They. You know, I know I say this a lot, but, you know, she came from WWE. She's not going to lose matches. Like, it, yeah. it's just not going to happen. Yeah. I think they're going to do a, a tag team match here soon, like maybe against all odds. I think they might do Deanna and, and uh, Chelsea versus Mickey and Mia Yim. That's just what kind of makes sense. Yeah. And I thought at Bound for Glory they were going to do Jordan and Mia Yim. I'm, I, I'm leaning towards a four-way hmm. with, with uh, Deanna and – and Chelsea, I which I, I think would be a shame. I, I think a four way would be a shame. A shame because yeah. I, I think that, like, again, you have a really good roster of knockouts right now. Let's get a few good individual matches. You know, let's let's get a few good stories that are playing out. Like, let's get to a point where whoever is going against each other for the title at Bound for Glory, you still have at, at least two other stories to see what's going to happen after that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you have enough knockouts to where, um, you know, Deanna Perrazzo doesn't have to be facing someone for the, for the knockouts championship at uh, at Bound for Glory, but she's just looming, you know, to, ready to challenge whoever comes out of Bound for Glory with the title. You know, like, I think you can do – there's a lot of great stuff you can do, man. Like, you got these knockouts, man. Let, send them out there. Let them have some good matches – Tell some good stories about competition. Um, you know, you don't got to do the undead realm stuff and the the um, what was it? The Real Housewives of Slamtown, which is fun. I've enjoyed some of that stuff, but you have a roster of people who can go out and put out put on some banger matches. At the end of the day, wrestling fans like the stories about competition, whether it's like personal competition, you know, like some sort of blood feud. Or whether it's just, I want to beat you because, you know, I want the title. I want to be better than you. Like, all of that stuff. Like, do some of that with the knockouts. I think you have a roster of knockouts that is competent enough to deliver you some good quality storyline feuds and some good quality matches at the end of the day Like th- that fans will be talking about going forward. Like, oh, man, you know, because impact is impact, people don't do this enough. but um, Mickey James and Deanna Perrazzo had one of the best feuds last year out of any any people in wrestling. It was phenomenal. 
And in the process, it elevated so many people. Like that was good damn wrestling. And um, and again, like with this group of knockouts they have now, they can continue to do stuff like that. I'm gonna want a one on one match over a multi person match every single time. There's not even a there's no multi person match you could present to me that I'm gonna say, okay, I want that instead of a one on one. So okay. I hope that's not where they go with it, but I just I really think it's possible. I'd rather see Dion and Chelsea go for the tag team titles. But I really feel like they're going to go four way. Yeah. So I, I hope not, but I enjoyed everything. This episode had a lot of shenanigans, though, which is, which is what I didn't like about it. Like every match had someone running in, or, or uh, that, that's one of the things that makes the AEW program just suck a lot of the times. Just every match finishes with a post match angle. Every match. Yeah. I don't mean some of them or a lot of them like it, it's like every every match whoever loses always attacks the heel always attacks the baby face or someone comes down it's something every time and that's kind of what i felt watching this episode i'm like every, everything had an angle and uh i i just i don't think it's always necessary some matches yes like you needed to advance something but i mean this the, the constant run-ins every single match there was an era of WWF in the Attitude Era that was, I, I want to say it was during the Attitude Era, maybe when they were transitioning out of it, that everything was a run in. Every, every right. single match, everything was a DQ. It's just like, oh my God. So um, I, I didn't really like all that. I would have just really just appreciated the match. Uh, I didn't expect Mia Yim to lose. I really didn't. I would have liked to see Chelsea win. When she tried to do eat the feet on a, on Mia Yim, it was funny because her legs are so long. Mm-hmm. Like, it just looked like she was ha- halfway across the ring. <laughs> it, it, it was just funny. Uh, I'm so glad Mia Yim uses, uses that finisher. I've said it before. If she started doing the package, package pile driver, I was going to lose my shit. I'm really, I'm really happy she does that. But it, it was it was one of the better knockout matches for me. And it was one of the ones I had the most interest in. When I saw the graphic, I was like, of every pairing they could do, I, I think I'd have the most interest in this right now. So, really yeah. good. Yeah. All right, guys, we're gonna skip ahead here a little bit because we're uh, we're pretty deep into the show here. Um, let's. Uh, there's a few a few few promos and you know nonsensical matches we're gonna skip here. Um, Impact uh, Wrestling World Champion Josh Alexander versus Diener. Alexander immediately goes on the attack as he pummels Diener in the corner. Alexander hits a backbreaker for two. Alexander connects with a running crossbody to the back. Diener retreats to the outside where he delivers a thumb to the eye. Good old thumb to the eye. Then he sends Alexander face first into the steel ring post. Diener chokes him on the ropes as he attempts to slow the pace down. Alexander counters the Diener DDT into a series of German suplexes. Alexander locks in the ankle lock, but Diener grabs the rope, forcing him to break the hold. Alexander counters the Diener DDT once again, this time into an ankle lock to win by submission. Uh, Josh Alexander defeats Diener. Duh. What the heck did you think was going to happen? Um, the Diener stuff in the beginning, we haven't heard him talk. He said it was his first in-ring promo in Impact. Yeah. And I thought he sounded good. The, the Honor No More stuff, when Eric Young's cutting his promos, it sounds like it's the same shtick every single time. Mm-hmm. There's just nothing different about Honor No More. There's no, there's been no change in that stable in the in the past year. So just to hear Diener talk was really really refreshing. Right. And prior to Slammiversary, I was actually pissed that Doring and Josh Alexander had the match and it was a bullshit finish. And I said, you know, Josh needs this win because he needs. He needed a, like, why can't he beat the undefeated guy for momentum going into the pay-per-view? Now I see it, you know, there, there was, you know, there was more to the story where they knew that Joe Doring was going to have to challenge him. Um, and it's a bullshit uh, opponent because they have no one else, you know, right. to face it. Uh, so I, I get it. He, now he's going to beat Joe Doring. I get it now. Um, Speaking was, of which, I yeah. thought it was, man, okay. So, did you see that uh, Josh Alexander is going to be facing, um, who is it, uh, Jacob Fatu at Ric Flair's yeah. last match? 
And I was yeah. like, yo, Impact, how? How do you let Conrad book this match and you can't book this match? Like, bro, like, what is going on here? Like, you know, oh my God. Like, it's to me, that's just such a fail, such a miss. You know what I mean? I'm pretty sure you could have came together with Court Bauer and worked something out where you guys could have figured out a way that you both could have benefited from this match. Right? Well, you know, it, it, it's possible because obviously we saw Davey Richards at Slammiversary. Um, I, I'm going to say that was a one-off because we would have seen him on this episode if we were going to see any more of him. Not saying he was going to sign. I thought maybe he would do the tapings. But if he was going to – he would have been on the show if, if – I, I could be wrong, but sla- but uh, Sammy Callahan appeared at their event tonight or whatever, their battle riot. Okay. So that was probably the exchange. Yeah. But it sounds like they're talking at least. So. Right, but the point is that this is a big match. This is a big match. This is a like I don't even watch MLW, but I've heard and seen enough about Jacob Fatu that I'm like, oh, yo. I- I want to see that. You know what I mean? Him and Josh Alexander, like, you know, Josh Alexander has established himself, right? Like, his name gets mentioned by people who don't like or watch Impact Wrestling as a, a name of somebody who is gaining a reputation for putting on good-ass matches, okay? And if he wrestled in Ring of Honor, he'd have a million stars to his name. If he was having these matches in the Tokyo Dome, Dave Meltzer would give him all the praise in the world. Josh Alexander is like wrestling and impact is a hindrance to Josh Alexander's popularity at this point. Okay. <laughs> right. With, with the, the, the quality of the matches that he is putting in on a consistent basis. And MLW is like GCW in a sense where, it has a fan base, you know, that sees it a certain way. And by the way, one one thing that MLW does so much better than Impact, MLW does cool way better than Impact. Way Wait, better than Impact. Cool. They do cool. Like if you look, if you watch their product, there's a lot of, you know, rapidy rap music. The characters are like edgy. Um, you know, like they just they're they're just way better at it than Impact. And um that's the type of stuff you could use if you're Impact. It doesn't have to be an invasion angle. Everybody loves invasion angle. It doesn't have to be that. But, like, you can use the popularity of MLW to your advantage, especially when you're taking somebody who I think had the MLW title for, like, a year or something crazy, and you're putting them against your current world champion. Like, I just – it's wild to me that – uh that that impact let this happen and they you know didn't try to book this you know themselves or try to book it in the future or whatever so i don't know that's, I, I i i saw that and i couldn't not say something <laughs> all right uh frankie kazarian wants to reignite his long-standing rivalry with chris saban as he challenged him to a match next week does anybody care about this it, it'll be good it'll, it'll be cool um yeah it, it's they did a BS finish before, so now they're like, okay, now we're gonna give you the match. I mean, it's gonna mean nothing, but it just it just for the the TNA fans, you know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. it'll be one of the better matches we see on the show in a while, sure. Um, former Knockouts champion Tasha Steele revealed that she'll receive her contractually obligated rematch against Jordan Grace at Against All Odds, but first she must battle Savannah Evans next Thursday on Impact. Um, I, one thing about Impact that always annoys me is how fast they blow through their title rematches. Uh, I'm glad at least this one is going to, you know, be a couple of days or a couple that, of weeks. In between. That was the point I was just going to make. I'm glad that it's at – it's against all odds. That's what it is? Yes. Okay, I'm glad it's there because, yeah, typically they just blow their load and Tasha Steeles would get her rematch three days later. And, you know, Moose – Moose said something for his match with Josh Alexander that I've thought this forever. If Josh Alexander had months to prepare for me, why do I have days to prepare for him? Right. For the rematch, you know? Uh, And and it's because they just, you know, every company does it, to be honest. 
uh, they, they just rush through that rematch so they can move on to the next story. But the story can still, yeah, we don't want to watch the same matches all the time. So I can understand why you want to just give it to us right away and get it out of the way. But it does a disservice to the former champion because Tasha's going to lose the match. Mm-hmm. And then she's just going to go back to where she was prior to winning the knock- knockouts championship. Rather than if you el- elongate the storyline and she gets some singles victories and gets some momentum and then she loses, well, a- at least she had some momentum up to that point. But all we're going to see is her lose twice in a row. Right. Um, and then Savannah Evans, like, it's getting kind of old. Like, oh, if you get by Savannah, like, you're going to get by Savannah Evans. I don't know if you've ever won. So. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, it, it's like an AEW when when uh, M, uh, MJF like hires like the butcher and the blade. Like, well, you got to right. face the butcher. Oh, okay. <laughs> like, when, when do they last win? You know? so, no, damn it, not the butcher. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh no. What am I gonna do? I don't even know what his finisher is. So. All right. We had Sammy Callahan in action uh, against Jack Price. Okay, um, how do you think that went? Duh. Okay. Uh, so, well, he was one of the uh, the gut check winners. So, ah. you know, so we saw Jackson Stone at Slammiversary. Right. And then uh, this dude and the other one, they all have, like, official graphics now. I don't know if they're on the website, but not, and not official graphics, but official photos. Okay. I don't know if they're on the website right now. But I have seen him circulating social media, which tells me all three of them should be getting used. Um, by the way, Impact does – every wrestler gets all these great photo shoots, mm-hmm. but they don't release any of the photos as 8 by 10s in the uh, in Shop Impact. I mean, it's just, like, easy to print out a damn photo, sign it, sell it, and just every, every loop put up new photos and, and make money. Right, you know, like the cost, the the return on investment over an eight by ten is, I mean, the profit margin's huge. So it's I, I don't understand that. Um, and then I've you know, especially with the knockouts, there's so many things you can do if you've got all these great photos. I I don't understand. I know I'm getting off topic, but it was good that we saw the gut check dude. They even said, hey, he won gut check, but then he goes out there and gets his ass kicked. <laughs> right. You know, he did a second row heat. You know. <laughs> <laughs> right just keep working in seven years you can be x division champion yeah i i get it i get it like okay he won this competition he's coming in as a rookie and that's more realistic than how wrestling usually does it where the debuting guy comes in and wins it's more realistic to say hey i'm new i'm coming in i'm gonna lose but it's also not a good good start right absolutely you know totally he, he was squashed it wasn't a match like he just beat him in 30 seconds right um, but yeah, after the bell, Moose blindsided Sammy Callahan with a spear, and it appears that things are far from over between these two rivals as Moose assaults him with a chair and then sends him crashing through a table at ringside. Didn't somebody tell me Moose was injured and was going away? I felt like somebody. Yeah, that's him. what I thought too. And it's uh, they had a lot of people from Slam Anniversary who took really major bumps, like end up on the show. Yeah, you know, the only person selling their match of anniversary, Derek Young. Right. You know, because he didn't show up on the show. Yeah. Okay. So, Moose jumps Sammy Callahan. The Good Brothers tell the Briscoes despite their history, they have their backs in tonight's six-man tag event. Right. James Storm tells Chris Harris that he can't accompany them to ringside because he's retired from every competition. Um, I'm also happy about this. I hope this is, I hope they're not like teasing a way to get Chris Harris back in the ring because Chris Harris does not look like he's in anything he close no. to ring shape. He, dude, he's going to wrestle at some point. I'm, I'm sure of it. Oh, boy. But, it, yeah, it'll be rough. I mean, dude, they, they had Ken Shamrock out there, man, for over a year yeah. wrestling, which he's in much better yeah, shape. Yeah, but I'm about to say, look at the shape but, Ken Shamrock's in. Yeah, but yeah, he's in much better shape. But what I'm saying is, like, they don't have a problem putting uh, – someone who should really shouldn't be wrestling anymore in the ring. Yeah. You know. But he, but at least Ken Shamrock is in at least Ken Shamrock is in the type of shape where he could possibly convince you that he should be wrestling. Right, that he could uh, against yeah. your better judgment. 
Yeah. <laughs> Chris Harris is not. <laughs> okay. Yeah. He's going to wrestle at some point. I'm sure of it, though. So, uh, Sammy Callahan tells Gail Kim that he wants Moose in Raven's clockwork orange house of fun in order to settle their score once and for all. I don't know what that is. I don't either. And I don't, I shouldn't say I don't want to see it because I don't, I have to give it a chance, but. I bet you $100 is a hardcore match. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) You know, and Gail Kim did say, I saw this on social media. I, I feel like I might have fast forwarded to it through it on the show. It was on the show, right? When Gail Kim, yes. yeah, Sammy went to Gail Kim, yes. and I was I was happy that she at least said what could be worse than a monsters ball match. Like at least she was saying kind of what we're thinking. Like okay, when you have this kind of match, how do you have another match after that? That's kind of what she was saying. Right. So we'll see what the hell this is. Yes, we shall see. All right, so we had uh, Honor No More versus the Briscoes and James Storm. You, you, so you fa- so real quick, you fast forwarded past the Bupinder and Shark Boy shit, right? Of you course. Said you were... There was come on. Man. Yeah, it, I don't want to talk about it, but the only thing I want to say is Bupinder should have never been put in as a singles wrestler. Right. Um, he should have been in a tag team. He should have been in Desi Hit Squad like he was supposed to. Should have been with Sheer and Raj. Like, that dude should have never been. I don't think he's even close to being ready to be a, a singles wrestler like that. He easily could have been part of a heel tag team. There was no reason to make him a baby face because people would have booed him just fine because they didn't know who he was. Right. And now he's doing this. Right. So, anyway, let's move on to what matters. All right. So we got a preview of things to come at against all odds in tonight's star-studded main event. The Briscoes on fire as they overwhelm Bennett with a flurry of fast-paced offense. Bennett sends Jay into the corner, then makes the tag to Edwards. Storm quickens the pace as he brings the fight as he sends all three members of Honor No More to the floor. The Briscoes soar with an aerial assault to the outside. Bennett sends Storm into the steel ring post, shifting the momentum in Honor No More's favor. Taven connects with the springboard moonsault for a two count on Storm. I don't know more. Cut off the ring as they attempt to wear Storm down. Storm makes the tag, but the referee doesn't see it thanks to a distraction from Taven and Bennett. Storm avoids a charging Edwards, then hits him with a backstabber to create separation. Storm successfully tags in Mark, who takes Edwards off the apron with a running drop kick. Briscoes have been at beat with a double team neck breaker, but Taven breaks up the pin. Taven and Bennett hit the Broton pack on Mark to score the victory. So Honor No More gets the win in the main event. After the match, Kenny King, Vincent, and PCO join Honor No More in the ring as they continue the assault. Impact World Tag Team Champions, the Good Brothers, attempt to make the save, but the numbers advantage is still not in their favor. Honor No More beat them down then brutally attack Mark Briscoe's leg with a steel chair, just as they did to Rhino and Heath. Honor No More stands tall as Impact goes off the air. What would you think about this main event? So what I was saying earlier, none, none of the matches, I, I, I'm trying to go over the matches in my head again. Everything had a post-match angle. Everything had a post-match beatdown. If you do it every single match, it means nothing. Yeah, so... The match itself was great. James Storm, I meant to say this earlier when James Storm was on the mic, but he, his, it's kind of like what we said about Jay White several months ago when he started talking and he just had this presence that no one on the Impact roster had. Right. That's what I got with James Storm this time. He started talking and it was just like, wow. I mean, I don't know if I want him around full time necessarily because it's just kind of like, I, he's one of my favorite wrestlers. Don't get me wrong, but it's, it's just so like we just keep seeing James Storm's storm come and go, and it's like it's like with Madison Rain, she cannot leave again. Like it will, I shouldn't say that. When she leaves, she needs to be to be done. Like they, they cannot do the return of Madison Rain again. You know, right. You can only come and go so many times. So it's just like I just prefer him just coming and doing matches here and there, but. Years ago, a lot of people had that promo ability on the roster. And now it's like, God, I mean, he, he just talks and it's it's a complete different, in a complete different league 
from yeah. the majority of the people who've got the the promos on the show right now. Yeah. Um, but but it was a good main event. They they've had a habit of some pretty good main events and tag team matches. I don't understand why they announced the Briscoes for the match if he was just getting taken out on that same episode. Uh, maybe they recorded. I know they recorded the little bullshit Dr. Ross segment where he right. said that the Briscoe, Briscoe's going to wrestle. Maybe they did that. Hey, we, we need this content just in case, whatever. One of those things. I'm sure they, they do that quite a bit. But it, it was just weird that they announced the match and then the next day, like, oh, well, Briscoe's pulled out. Yeah. So I understand Mark Briscoe's out, but his brother obviously could wrestle. And because he's not, that makes me feel like they're done. Yeah. Uh, they're definitely done. And also, pulling out is good for your wallet. Um, I just want to say that <laughs> in the future. Yeah, like, okay, $1,800 a month. So that <laughs> Remember that. <laughs> uh, we're here to give you life advice, okay? Yeah. Come for the wrestling, stay for the life advice. Right, right. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh yeah man I, I mean the briscoes you know they were just here for a short time but it's like if you to me i'm like yo impact like why do you hoard your tag team titles so much like you know like you had the briscoes for three weeks like and they were they were the tag team champions what the fuck, yo? <laughs> like my god nothing means anything um yeah. whatever whatever um so how do you feel about the kind of reset of storylines coming out of Slammiversary and going forward right now? I don't feel like they're resetting at all. Mm. Um, I feel like everything's just kind of continuously rolling. Yeah, and I'm not trying to get back on my, my We Own the Night Kick. That's not where I'm trying to go with it. But I think oh. Slammiversary... Oh! Yeah, please don't. I feel, I feel like Slammiversary every year... There's two points in the year. Slammiversary or... January 1st. I think it's a really good opportunity for them to do soft rebrands. Mm -hmm. And what I mean is um, you, you, you don't rebrand all the way where you change a logo and all that kind of crap. That's, you know, but it's like, if you follow a sports team and they have their, uh, their hashtag for their season, right. you know, like the Clippers, we had a LA our way. You know, uh, and, the, and then the next season you we have something else. You know, my my WMA team this this year we're you know hashtag Fever Ignite. And next year it's going to be something different. So they're, they're just soft rebrands, and I feel like either if it's not the top of the year after Slam Anniversary, that's when you're like, okay, we're going to start experimenting with presenting the show a little bit different. Um, and I think it it helps make things look and feel fresh, but they don't. It's, it's back to the same, the same shit. And, um, I just felt like after slam anniversary, these storylines were the same ones that they were prior to slam anniversary. The show looks and feels exactly the same. I'm just, it's just like, I don't feel like we're progressing forward at all. Like I just feel like we're just still in, in April and May. You know, if you will, there's just nothing. There was nothing fresh about this episode to me. That's what. That's the one thing that kind of like really disappointed me about it. Yeah. It just, I get that. That that is the the hardest thing about me watching the show right now. Even when the shows are really good, is that God, these all feel exactly the same. Yeah. Um. I think I think that's a totally fair. I think that's a totally fair assessment. I think that's a totally fair assessment. Um. For me. Um. Yeah, I, I don't feel like the storylines necessarily reset, um, I, but I do feel like they're kind of continuing. On. Like getting to see the little, um, the the hinting, the teasing towards you know uh, dissension within I don't know more. To me, that's like dangling the carrot of okay, here's where we might be going, and yeah. like to me that does it that freshens up the story a little more, so I can say okay, let me just let me see what's going to happen here, right? So. Little things like that, I think, I think are good. Um, like I said, they didn't, they didn't reset, but it did kind of refresh a little bit. And um, yeah, I mean, like you know, let, let's just see. Like I, 
don't know where Sammy Callahan and Moose are going. Like, I thought Sammy Callahan's victory over Moose at Slamiversary was a little too decisive. And I um, so too. And um, I, I just I, I just don't know if you – I mean, like, Moose is a made man in Impact Wrestling. Like, Moose, I, Moose can withstand some losses. But I just don't know if, like, this guy was just your world champion. Like, he shouldn't be just – you know, he shouldn't be just getting beat, like, so clean, you know? I, I, like, like make it look like somebody's got to fight for their life to beat him. Um, yeah. But I don't know. I, I'm, I'm still interested going for it. Um, I'm interested what's going on with the knockout, so I want to see, you know, where, where they're going. So um, let's pose one to uh, to the fans out here taking, taking a watch. Um, drop down in the comments below. Tell us what are you most excited about going forward? You know, what do you think is going to be uh, the best storyline going forward? Um, we're a, about an hour and a half in, so I think this is a good place to kind of call it. We'll get back to uh, maybe next week we'll do some uh, F. Mary Kill with, uh, with, with, with the show. Um, and we might even do some from the comments section. We'll see. We'll Ooh. see. Um, BQ, why don't you tell the people where they can find you out here in these social media streets? It's what you see on the screen at BQ Speaks on a Twitter Twitter machine. And, uh, yeah, don't, don't look that up anywhere else. Twitter will be fine. <laughs> yes, sir. And also, uh, everybody, look, just right here, same thing on mine, same thing on mine. Uh, boom, look at, boom, look at that right there. At TW Talking About on your social media of choice. You can also find me at Talking About Pod. Uh, and you can go... You know, you, you've watched enough of this video. Everybody type in Talking About Podcast and go to that page and subscribe to that page right now, too. Okay, go ahead. Over there right now. I got some new content coming out for the pod real soon. But if you guys really like the show, you want to support the show, you want to support the channel, the best thing you can do is tell a friend to tell a friend. Let's bring more people into the conversation. For BQ, I'm TW. Peace.